the meeting. Jesus said, Isaiah 1 to 18, God says, Come, let us reason together. And yet religion says, You've got to be of this one church. No one outside of our church can go to heaven. Fall to hell with your church. You talk about stereotyping. You talk about a doctrine of devils where only certain people can go into heaven. That's not God. Another religion. If you kill infidels, really? And that they're going to give you a virgin. Well, if I'm correct, after you have a virgin, she's no longer a virgin, so that's a lie. If I peddle these magazines, if I multiple wives and have multiple children, these are the ways of religion to get to God. And God says in John 8, 44, they are the lie of Satan. Religion is a lie of Satan that he may have you damned. And yet, the truth of God is Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Salvation is oneism. There's one way to God. One way. And that way is Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Ye must be born again. You must repent and turn from your sins in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ before you die. This cannot be done after death. You can't taste hell and say, oh, I'll come back and redo it. That don't work. It's impossible. In the Bible, once death is come, it's come and gone. And everything that you've done in your life has been settled. Now as far as your sins, the account of your sins, settle that count now with God. Take your sins to Jesus Christ and be ye washed in the blood of God, Acts 20:28. 20, be ye washed. That when you do die, you'll be present with God and you can say, the old account was settled long ago. Upon a hill called Calvary. Where Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And he rose again according to the scriptures. That's what we proclaim. That is what the Bible says. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel has been brought and has been finished and has been accomplished by the works of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You will die. I am sure of that. I don't know when. Well, you can take that bet of your death to Las Vegas and win much money. And the Bible says, well, why, why am I going to die, preacher? Because you are a sinner. The wages of sin is this. Upon your death, you can know you have salvation, but the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Listen, I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I was told I was going to heaven, but you did not know you were going to heaven. But I know by the Bible, I know by the Bible, Jesus, of 
eternal life. And today we bring to you that you are a sinner, you are going to die, and the gift of God is Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we proclaim what Jesus saved us from, our sins. And proclaim that if I were to die right now, I will leave this body and enter to be with God forever. Listen, look around at you in America. A person may come with a gun right now and shoot us all up, dead, in America. Somebody may kill us right now. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, I will be absent from this body and present with the Lord. And if you're not saved, you'll wake up in the other direction called hell. From Daytona Beach, Florida. There are two destinations upon death. It's heaven by Jesus Christ, or it's hell by not believing Jesus Christ. It's that simple. It is that oneness that only Jesus saves. And Jesus Christ alone that saves. Nothing else. And with that oneness, God has said, Go tell them about my Son. Tell them that they can be saved by my Son if they were to believe and confess their sins. That is the love of God. Tell them. Show them. Because most of you don't know. Some of you church goers are listening to me and you can't believe what's being said. Because this message is not found in most churches. This will not be found on the radio dial. This will not be on the boob tube. What's the message that Jesus saves? Jesus became our remedy for death. Jesus became the only hope to get out of hell. You can't even find hell in churches. I ain't talking about Hades. I'm talking about H-E-L-L. -L, hell. You've heard that expression before. Your friends have told you, go to hell. And yet we tell you not to go to hell. And we tell you not to go to hell by Jesus Christ. And the Bible commands you to bring your children to Jesus. Suffer not the little children, but bring them on to me. It is your parental duty to bring your children to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father, that's God, but by me. Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I have believed on Jesus. Though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because I have believed on Jesus. Now, if I get caught in a fire, okay, I don't like pain, but death itself is no more burden. Death itself, I do not fear. Now, I may fear the way of death. I don't, I want to go close my eyes, make it easy. We all do. But death itself is no more burden because I have believed on Jesus Christ. There's no fear in death when you have Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, when you've got Jesus Christ, there's a hope of death. There's a hope that He will come. Take us out of this miserable, rotten planet they call Earth. And the very fact is that God has not taken me home. It's because I have to be here for you. Paul says, much willing to be absent from the body, but, 
be more for you guys here. So the very fact is I can't enjoy heaven right now because I have a call to tell you about heaven and Jesus Christ. Can you hope that? With all your plans and everything you got, can you hope right now God ruin all my plans and just call me home? Can you say, even so, amen, Lord Jesus, come? Come on, you Bible believers. Amen, even so, come Jesus. That's a great place to find in the Bible because it's the last thing written in the Bible. The last prayer in the Bible says, come on, Jesus, let's go. I've even heard Christians say, oh, no, not yet, Lord. If you're not wanting Jesus to come right now, there's something wrong with your walk. There's something wrong with your life when you don't want Jesus. That is the test of your walk with God right now. Of anything that could happen to you right now, if Jesus would interfere, you've got trouble. Come on, preacher, there's nothing else you wouldn't want but Jesus, or anything but Jesus. If that Aladdin's lamp popped right here in front of me right now, I rubbed in that genie, came out, said you got three. There'll be no more three wishes, just one, and I'm gone. There is nothing more important than Jesus Christ to see and be with. Except for the fact is that God wants me here right now to tell you about Jesus. You're going to die. Open up your newspaper and read the obituary page. People died. They've been dying every day. Well, we come out here so because you won't be in church, so you can know what God expects that you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. So when you die, you won't go to hell. That these messages are not in churches. And for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, that you may get the eternal hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you for wanting us out here. I am Stanley Hayward, and I approve of this message. You need not be so grumpy about Jesus Christ. End your grumpiness. Believe on Jesus Christ and get love, joy. Dare don't work. Jesus works. I dare you to believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen, salvation in Jesus Christ. Salvation in Jesus Christ will end the grumpy pants. If you're to believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, and do what the Bible says, there's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience. Still working on that one. I'll be honest, I'm still a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace, but I am enjoying Jesus Christ. How about you, grumpy pants? Are you enjoying your life? Are you happy? I'm happy in Jesus. Peter told me last night as we studied the Bible, I'm to be joyful in tribulations and problems and suffering. How are you doing today in with Satan? How's Satan treating you today? How's your religion making you so happy and joyful? Huh? Where is your joy in serving your God? I'm a Catholic. I've dealt with you. I was one of you. Where is your joy? Where is your hope? Come on. 
pick up a sign, pick up your mouth, and explain to the world what your joy is, what your laughter is. I tell you what mine is, it's Jesus. Proclaim on the sidewalk your joy. I dare you. Come on, proclaim. I'm so happy that alcohol ruined my family, ruined my finances, ruined everything in my life, and it's given me a disease. I'm thankful for it. Come on, where is it? But I proclaim the wondrous saving name and the saving God of Jesus Christ, of who I boast, of who I love, who I dedicate my all in all to, Jesus Christ, who has given me joy, who has given me peace, who has given me salvation, that if I were to die, I will be with God by Jesus Christ. It's a name to proclaim. It's a name to shout, Jesus Christ. I don't say it enough, Jesus Christ. And yet, I don't use it as a cut. You don't like us being out here, but man, we like being out here. We like proclaiming God's way, the truth, and the life. You can't shut us up about God. The wonderful, matchless grace of God through Jesus Christ. The wonderful retirement of blessing that God has offered to me by His Son. I'm getting a mansion. What about you? John chapter 14. I'm getting a mansion. What do you get? What is your God offering you? That you may know of a surety that you're going to get what your God has offered to you. You say, you're not getting the mansion. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know I'm getting the mansion. Jesus said that. It's in the scriptures, John chapter 14. I know I have eternal life by Jesus Christ. How about your God? What is your God offering you? If you don't believe in God, you're not getting nothing. And we already celebrated your birthday on April 1st. But what is your hope? What is your joy? What is your boasting? Bring it forth. Where is your standing today with God? Are you saved? If your last breath, I don't know what's going to happen with that last breath, what then? That last heartbeat, what then? Where will you wake up in eternity? Alright? I'll take for granted that many of you don't believe the Bible. I would be a fool to say that many of you did believe the Bible. But, uh, let's... You don't believe the Bible. Are you willing to take that bet? Are you willing to put your eternity to say, well, I believe just because I believe that there is no life after death, I'm dead. Are you willing to believe, just to believe that? You're willing to put it all on that. You're willing to trust your religion or whatever you have after you die. You've got that 100% assurance. You know beyond a reasonable doubt that whatever you believe in is going to work. Listen, 
Listen, I've lost hope with humanity. i lost hope with this world. But I haven't lost hope with Jesus. What about you? That doctor that helped you, he may die before you do. America could fall tomorrow. Babylon fell in one night. The king had a drunkard party and he never woke up to the new kingdom. That's in the Bible. Daniel. This great freedom, this greatness of America that we love and enjoy may be gone tomorrow. And if America's your hope, America's your joy, there's no America after death. You go to the same place your priest and your pope go, the grave. What kind of hope is that? My hope, my confidence is one that's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Yes, Jesus died, but he arose from the grave. That's my God. My God conquered death. My God gave me eternal life. What about yours? Are you willing to say and believe that the Bible is not true and trust in it? And I ask you, what if the Bible is correct and you're wrong? What if you're wrong and the Bible is correct? And the Bible says that without Jesus, you're damned. What if that's correct? I know it is. But you unbelievers, what if it is true? What if there is a God? And that loving, holy, righteous God will throw you into hell for rejecting His Son. Can you stand in the amazement of your belief in hell forever? Can you live with yourself in hell for believing such stupidity and not on Jesus? Are you willing to forfeit what God has said because you believe something other than God, a simple human being that will die? To a God that has died and has rose again according to the Scriptures. You are so more well intelligent than what God is. That you can outthink God. Really? You're so more important that you're better than God. For God created you, and God has given you a way to be saved in His love. That you as a piece of dirt from the ground are more important than Jesus Christ. And you may say, well, I'm not more important than Jesus Christ. If you're not believing on Jesus Christ, you're more important than Jesus Christ. If you're not trusting the finished works of Jesus Christ, you think whatever you believe, whatever that belief is, you think it's better than Jesus' offering. That will be the charge. Where God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. That's God. You can't come to God without Jesus Christ. You can't. Are you willing to trust what you believe to outdo what Jesus has done? Are you so foolish that you will take a gift of God that created 